Hey Kingdom Hearts fans, my name is Unlike Mike, but if you'd like, you can just call me Mike. And today I'm bringing you back another Kingdom Hearts Theory video. This time I want to talk about the secret endings for KH1, 2, and 3 and how they might connect to Kingdom Hearts 4 or possibly another future game. Uh, but before that, as always, if there is a channel update, I will always leave it at the end of the video, which there is going to be one at the end of this video. That being said, I really wanted to start with Kingdom Hearts three because this is what's going to make the most sense i think for this video uh the first thing that i'd like to point out is this scene right here where we get the this black cloaked figure and he throws up the heart towards the moon i think most of the community has basically agreed with themselves that this is most likely the master of masters i don't think so uh, me personally only because if you notice the hood you can kind of see the person's chin and usually when we see the master of masters, even when he deadpans the camera, you know, it's just covered. It's all, it's all black and you don't see any sort of skin. So this kind of leads me to believe that this isn't the master of masters. Who knows? It could be Luke Su, could be a different character. I'm not sure, but that is something that I'm going to kind of going to get into more towards when we get to kingdom hearts one. Uh, but that's the first thing I wanted to point out to you. The other thing is our two endings that we get at the end uh after beating yuzora or losing to yuzora uh typically we refer to this as like good ending and bad ending or true ending and i guess false ending or whatever but I don't lose. i'm under the personal belief i've always kind of thought from the start that there is no true ending and no false ending that they're both just two different scenes that we're going to get in a future game because if you notice in this bad ending with Sora, uh, when you when you lose, you know he's pants so he's panting or he's just worn out because dude just got washed. Sora says his line, but then if we go to the second ending, Sora kind of just fades, and they don't really look as if they were in a battle at all to be honest so i think one of these scenes occurs before the other one i think both of them will end up being uh a scene in the future game they just happen either at different times or maybe the first part happens with sora getting crystallized uh maybe he breaks out then this scene plays and yazora says you know that line or like i said this could happen this part could maybe happen in the beginning of the game while the crystallization or whatever happens more towards the end of the game. I don't know. But like I said, my, the main thing with King Mars 3 is one, I do not believe that person at the top of the roof throwing up the heart was not the master of masters. And both the endings for the Azor battle are both a little fuzzy flying, <laughs> a little ADD moment. Sorry. Uh, both endings are the true endings in some form of way. So now I want to move and shift this over to Kingdom Hearts 2 next. So most people probably is, can assume where I'm going with this uh, for this secret ending is because I think other, other people have definitely have said this before that this secret ending possibly might happen in the future as well because we don't get anything like this with Terra on top of this whatever creature this thing is as well as when they walk when they're walking towards the uh, these keyblades and pick up the the Rikusaur and Mickey's keyblades. So yeah, I do, I do think that this is I'm amongst them. I do think that this is going to be a, a scene that we eventually get. Grand scheme of things, what I think is going to happen is I think that we're going to or not us, but certain characters are going to revisit past events in some form or fashion. Uh specifically with the Wayfinder trio, I think that they're going to end up coming back here um they can even revisit this as like a memory since we're already doing that it seems like Kyrie with melody of memories we're going through her memories and kingdom Mar at the end of the kingdom Hearts Three, we're setting up riku to kind of go through his dream with uh the, the city and the tall buildings which i'll explain more with kingdom hearts one but you can kind of guess where i'm guess where i'm going with that so basically there's two Things that happen in Kingdom Hearts 3 that to me suggests that we're going to revisit 
this in Kingdom Hearts, in a future Kingdom Hearts game is because it's kind of, it's, dude, it's hella goofy. Just to like forewarn you, this is like super left field. Uh, the less goofy one is, let, let, I'll just talk about their confidence. Because if we look at, you know, how look just look how they walk, right? And look how they're like acting right now. They're super, it's just like a lot of, they have a lot of swagger with them when they walk, a lot of confidence that it looks like. And when we know in Birth by Sleep, they weren't like this at all. Like they were super depressed or whatever when they meet in the crossroads uh, in Birth by Sleep. But in Kingdom Hearts 3, it kind of parallels this scene with Riku saying goodbye to all of them. Just go watch that scene back and you'll see what I mean when I'm referring to their swagger and their confidence. It's like the exact same tone that I get from that Kingdom Hearts 3 ending with, with uh, the Wayfinder trios and Riku. Now, the second thing is, <laughs> this is where it kind of... I got a couple screws loose in my head, to be honest, is um, they just randomly have their capes back. And that suggests to me that I don't know that it could possibly mean that we're going back to what this secret ending was supposed well, what we got for the secret ending, because in Birth by Sleep, they don't have these capes at all. Right. So it just it's kind of weird to me that they would bring them back now when we're already used to their design not having the capes right so obviously i believe that they just removed the capes either because the psp and making cape physics was probably a super pain in the ass or maybe design choice it just looked really bad when you're playing uh with those like graphics and maybe when you have like the character in front of you or whatever you're playing as whomever you're playing as just looks like a big Dorito on their back or something. So it could have just been a design choice, obviously. What stands out as weird is just why bring them back now? Because even Lingering Will in Kingdom Hearts 2 didn't have its cape. So, but Lingering Will in 3 does. So that's just kind of the, the, the main reason why I think that this will be a, a, future, a future scene in... A, and the next installment capes oh. and also to this character right you know how i said the character that throws up the hearts this could be that same character as well the the shadowy figure i actually think that it's possible there's a character in one in one secret ending the shadowy figure and the person that throws up the hearts are all the same person Right, where I know I'll get to it with Kingdom Hearts one, but that's sort of what I think is happening. I don't think this was like some grand scheme of Nomura or anything like that, but I think that this is something that could be adapted on, right? Uh, this is definitely something that they could make possible. Um, so this is how freaking nuts I am, right? I'm gonna try to do this. I was doing this before. I was going frame by frame <laughs> once. Just to look like every time like the figure changes, I'm like, oh, dude, it's a different person every time. Cause look, now it looks like Sora. And then now it looks like the Master Masters. And if you freeze it once, it looks like a person with long hair. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think I'm just, I think I'm just a little bit psycho. But so moving past two, let's go over to one now. So in Kingdom Hearts one secret ending, we have a few differences here. All right, we see Roxas, and one of our first differences is Riku doing this whole looking up, uh, splitting the clouds, and then we see a bunch of these shooting stars, possibly could be drifters, by the way, uh, now, and that doesn't happen, right? We know that that doesn't happen in, in days. Also, too, how cool would it be? <laughs> I'm going to make a prediction, all right, right now. For Kingdom Hearts 4, when we eventually revisit, because I do believe that we're going to revisit um, the world that never was, because it's the closest sounding thing to reality that is in Kingdom Hearts right now. So I think that this is like definitely a place we're going to revisit. But how cool would it be? This screen starts flashing 104. I don't know, I'm just saying. Look, get a little bit of goosebumps here. Woo! But uh, So yeah, this scene doesn't happen. This scene doesn't happen where this heartless symbol comes up. And this scene kind of happens, 
where he removes it, but he removes it because, you know, he needs to tap into his darkness or whatever, and he's losing the fight against Roxas on the ground, and it seems like he's doing it on top of the building, and he's got a smirk on his face and everything, and Riku definitely wasn't happy <laughs> when he was taking that off. I'm not going to go by each one, but that is the one that I needed. Go back. Because I'm sure somebody has had to go through all of these, all of the writings that pass by. But this is the only one that I really care for now, for right now. Is, uh, it just says, this is, the, this is the world in its true form. Right? This could be hella relevant for a future game. A lot of these sayings are like, a lot of these are like quotes from other games and sets up other future games for Kingdom Hearts. But uh, this one's the only one that has like no relevance. I don't think a character ever says this and i think that we could be going back to this in a future game and it's relevant one because like i have another theory video on my channel that that could be relevant towards you can go check that out if you'd like uh but also we know that scala and daybreak town you know they're inverses or something of each other so this line could be relevant soon towards uh scala and daybreak uh and, the, and their connection with each other and obviously i know i'm not the only one to ever say this too but I think this girl's going to end up being relevant too. I know, I think most people just agree that it is an early Kyrie design concept or whatever. I don't know if that's ever been confirmed. I don't think it has. Uh, me personally, I kind of think like when I think about it now, I'm lean more towards like this was actually maybe a nominee uh, early con uh, concept design instead of Kyrie. Just because I'm not sold because the whole hair, Kyrie's pink hair is iconic and. This girl's like not even close to it, but it would make sense if it was nominees, right? Because we got Roxas uh, in our in the secret ending. Also, too, there's another shooting star, possibly Drifter. But the we do know for Quadratum there is a, a Destiny Island. It's just like it seems like it's like a resort or something, according to some signs in Quadratum. So this could this scene could easily easily make it to to kingdom hearts 4 my that's funny my dumb ass as a little, as a kid when i first had seen this and played this uh i got so excited i thought that shit was gonna be freaking rhinoa because it's so stupid but uh no i don't think that's right no if i were to take a guess at who that is and i think i've heard people think it might be scald subject x um nameless star yazoro's girl uh could be uh Xehanort's mom that Xehanort's mom is definitely a possibility she's got dark hair which that would be pretty cool to be honest uh either which way I really hope that this person ends up having some sort of connection to Sora uh whether like Sora has this person in SR2 or whatever some sort of connection because it would be a nice way to explain why does Shion and Vanitas have black hair that's kind of something that I've always just like I'm waiting to get explained and I think it's just he has some black haired person you know within him or connected to him somehow whether it's like brain or possibly her or some other black haired character same with nominee nominee needs an explanation on the hair color right because all these nobodies they all look like they're somebodies except for when it comes to Shion and nominee and then Vanitas obviously too when it comes to like their hair color so I don't know maybe nominee maybe the, the reason nominee's hair is so like white blonde is because Sora's got Baldur's darkness or something inside of him. I don't know, but hopefully we get this adapted on. So going back to the guy who I said threw up the heart, the shadowy figure that we see in Kingdom Hearts two secret ending could be this guy, right? So some of you, have, I don't think that this is Roxas. Let's see if I can catch it. But when they come out of the rock, there's a heartless symbol that appears on their chest. I'll see if I can catch it. Most, most of you probably have already seen it, but in case you haven't, I'll show it. All right. But basically, yeah, there's a little heartless symbol that appears on his chest. And then the other reason why I don't think this is Roxas, there's no hair showing in the other secret ending trailer. Uh, he's got hair covering his face. And then the glowing eye. And then this is going to be <laughs> another stupid. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just catch like stupid things 
um the way the zipper is like super low down towards is like more towards their knee uh when we see roxas in the other trailer it's more towards its hip because he needs to be able to move around and fight i don't know that could be uh low to nothing and i know like this whole theory is a huge stretch honestly most of my theories are in general i think most theories are but still i don't think that this is that guy i think it's possible maybe all these people the shadowy figure the heart and this guy could be the master of masters could be luke shu also like i just randomly kind of thought up before making uh like kind of while making this um could be demix i don't know that would be a cool spot for him i think like that's uh obviously i have n no evidence for it but i'm just saying it'd be kind of cool uh especially with this whole line like he's super under the radar you know and maybe he's just been here in front of our face for every single secret ending that'd be a huge way to be under the radar but uh and this scene doesn't happen in days or kingdom Hearts 2 as far as i remember i don't remember rocks is coming out of the rock at all and Back to me talking about how I think that we could be revisiting past events. Uh, this is where this scene kind of falls in line with Riku. Uh, it's because he's trying to go to this, you know, he's with the fairy godmother. It seems like they're using the nameless star to go for him to get into Quadratum. I don't know. I'm kind of, it's unclear to me if they, he's actually going to go to Quadratum or is that just like the memories of. The nameless star but either which way i still think that riku himself is gonna have to dive into his own memories and uh especially because like i said tall buildings big city or whatever uh what, what's a good this place called not the world ends with you jesus uh the world that never was my bad <laughs> uh the it fits this similar description so he be, he could be revisiting this memory just to be able to find clues to where sora ends up or maybe it actually goes here and whomever this person is different they're just messing with him or whatever and probably like two more things i'd like to point out with this trailer if you can if you're quick enough and you uh go and watch the the screens all of them have um Kyrie from kingdom hearts one on them and i never realized that before until i started like watching these for th for this video that was kind of cool i just wanted to point that out see if anybody ever noticed that too but the other thing I want to notice, so when he's doing this whole Roxas is running up, he throws Riku the Keyblade with, or he throws him the Oblivion with his right hand. And then in days, Riku catches it still. Roxas switches his right hand to Oathkeeper, but it's slightly different here. Now this could be a whole lot of nothing, obviously. But... If you notice, Roxas actually has two Keyblades still in this scene, or Roxas, I'll say. He's got the Oblivion in his right hand, and he's got Kingdom Key D. He's got Kingdom Key D in his left hand now. Or no, he's got Kingdom Key D in his left hand, or right hand, and then Oathkeeper on the left. Uh, I seen this like a while back ago. I wasn't, I didn't catch this myself. Somebody else had shown me this. Uh, but again, we got also that sky splitting scene again. The scene appears with the girl appears again in right here. So right here, the, the scene happens again with the girl and the shooting star. It's just something I wanted to point out that it just happened twice and I never noticed that before. And then we have Mickey and he's rocking the kingdom key in that scene, which he normally doesn't. It should be the kingdom key D. So that could be an indication that maybe he comes back in this way or we're just revisiting a dream and some things are going to be different. And probably one of the last things that I want to um, point out to just as standing out as weird to me is, right, so we got this scene where they show the all four people or all three people, which is Roxas, Riku, Roxas again all the way at the end, Roxas all the way again at the end. And then I can't remember, is this Ansem the Wise or Semnus? I don't remember. Or is Aenor? Okay, whatever. So, but anyways, why would they show Roxas twice? I just don't get it. It just seems weird. The glowing eye thing, too. Again, the hair's not in front of the face for the first character, but the hair's in front of the face here. I think that the far character is another character, whether they're new 
Demix, Master Masters, I don't know, Luxu, I don't know, someone else. And I think that person is the same person who throws up the heart in the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. Also, one of the, I can't remember where it shows it, but one of these, one of the, the words that pop up is like metamorphosis. And I I'm, don't understand <laughs> what the fuck that has to do with Kingdom Hearts. Uh, so hopefully they adapt that too. Also, this whole like, he looks just like you. Like, Roxas doesn't look anything like Sora. I've always hated this scene. Just because it's like, I don't know. They don't, they don't look anything alike. <laughs> right. So hopefully maybe that gets reshaped into another conversation that that's repeated. And it's somebody that actually looks like Sora this time or whatever. I don't know. It's just a little personal, personal beef, I guess. Anyways, that's pretty much the everything. I'm, we'll recap it real quickly. It's for Kingdom Hearts 3, the person that throws up the heart. I don't think that that's the Master of Masters. And uh, both, the ending, both the scene when you lose to Yuzora and when you beat Yuzora, I think both of those will end up in Kingdom Hearts 4 as just separate scenes. Uh, and then kingdom hearts 2 secret ending it's i think that scene we will eventually get in a future game as well because like i said go back and watch the scene between riku saying goodbye to Terra, and when the wayfinder trios leave there's a sort of swagger and confidence that they have that matches exactly to that secret ending cutscenes, plus the capes being back <laughs> and then kingdom hearts 1 again the, the guy that comes out of the rock i do not believe is roxas because the whole the whole glowing eye thing hair not in front of the face uh also believe that we will be revisiting a memory from riku back at uh the world that never was and maybe we just i don't know i think we're just gonna relive that whole like falling down the the stuff oh and her too yeah <laughs> she's she's gonna be relevant too but yeah re riku reliving that whole falling jumping off the the skyscraper thing yeah but that pretty much concludes it I'll be honest with you guys, I almost didn't post this video, uh, one, because I was having a lot of technical difficulties. It seems like I've resolved all my issues. I have to do all of my videos on a really old laptop, so it's kind of difficult, and I just don't have the money to invest in something better. <laughs> so we work with what we got. And also, I was really reluctant because I know people have talked about the secret endings before, and I don't ever want to post like a theory that's not my own unless I think I can add something to the conversation like hopefully and hopefully I did that so like the only the only things I can really think of were I don't think I've ever heard anybody say is bringing up the confidence in the capes for for these guys and how that at the end of three and how that leads into this secret ending um as well as the the good and bad ending for kingdom hearts three those just being both can both can happen in the next game as well as like the shadowy figure the heart and the or the guy that throws up the heart at the moon and then in kingdom hearts one the one that comes out of the rock with the glowing eye all being a single person that we haven't met yet uh i'm, I'm telling you it should be demix but hopefully that is enough to kind of add value to this conversation let me know what you guys think in the comments uh if i've shown you guys anything new so the channel update is that i wanted to bring up to you guys kind of two things is i've had a slow down making videos only because i'm in the, currently in the middle of moving i should be done first week of august where i should be back to being more regular with with my postings um and hopefully streaming a lot more it depends i don't I should be able to stream once I move, but we'll see. If I can't stream, it'll just be regular uploads. But I plan on also doing some live streaming before I move out. Specifically, I'm currently playing Kingdom Hearts in chronological order, which is kind of funny because they just released uh, a video like, to, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, about what's the proper order to play square enix released a video on what's the proper order to play and what is it in chronolo what's the proper chronological order of it all and i, I kind of already started I, I watched back cover live streamed it uh that'll be on my channel if you want to go back and watch that 
and then next I'll be watching um, the fan dub for what's next Union Cross and then watching um, Dark Roads after that hopefully I get all that done this week and then I will start Birth by Sleep would be the first kind of gameplay videos I would be making uh, and ho hopefully those all done on live but if I can't I will just do it as regular uploads on YouTube so if that's something that you're interested in feel free to subscribe uh, and then speaking of subscribing I wanted to give like a huge thank you to to you guys like everybody who's like subscribed recently kind of came out of nowhere just randomly like now I'm over 100 subscribers which is like freaking weird uh, <laughs> it really it really came out of nowhere for me so thank you guys so much and like all the all the, like the nice comments you guys have just been leaving on my videos that's like my favorite part when you guys can add your voice to whatever i'm talking about like it just that that's the best part of youtube in my opinion i think and i'm trying to get back to you guys to as many people as i can since my channel is still pretty small i can have conversations with you guys through the the comments section so i don't know, keep keep it up like <laughs> i don't know what else to say aside from just like thank you you guys have freaking awesome and uh yeah so if you like the video give it a like uh if you like to subscribe i invite you to join me on this new youtube journey that i didn't know i was gonna take <laughs> and uh leave a comment as always and have a great day peace